Hello, my name is Tine. In this video I'll try to repair Makita battery pack. Friend bring me that broken Makita battery, if there is any chance to repair. It's 5 amp hour, so it's worth a try, because new 5 amp hour battery cost about 90 euros. Problem of battery pack is that there is no power on output. If we press battery level button, 2x2 two two diodes flashes. If I put on a drill, there is no action. And if I put on a charger, red and green LED flash, which mean broken battery. And also battery manual says, the battery have malfunction. To open the battery case we need Torx 10, but basic 1 quarter bit won't fit into hole. That's why I got some bit modified to fit into hole. Or use some smaller bit, or if you have direct Torx screwdriver. One of screw is secure with plastic cap. Easiest way to get it out is to use tiny flat screwdriver and simply punch into middle of cap. Then turn the cap and slowly pull out. When all four screws is removed, we can open the cover, remove the clip and pull out the entire battery pack. From there it's a delicate work, so if you don't get some electronic skills, leave it to someone else, because those battery can be dangerous if you make a short or any other fail which can be done quickly. Then first of all measure voltage of each cell, actually voltage of each pair, because there are 10 cells 2x2 connected in parallel and 5 connected in serial connection. All voltages is about 3.9 volt, which is great since the battery cells is most expensive part of battery pack. Next step is to unsolder the BMS, battery management system. We can see here some tiny wires connected between cells. This is because BMS got several protection for each pair of cells. It got over and under voltage protection, over current, temperature protection, prevent deep draining of cell and so on. I believe Makita's ones got also memory effect, so if it recognized that cell, it locked and also if we replace the cell it still won't work, until we replace the BMS also. Then I quickly check the BMS if there's just some fuse or other small issue, but can't find anything, so the only way to repair the battery is to replace the BMS. I search a lot, but can't find the exact same BMS, which fit into that housing, because literally every pack I opened was different. So I got no other chance like order a complete repair pack from Akita battery, which include everything except battery cells. I bought that kit on eBay for about $12 and includes just everything except cells. There's a housing, cell holder, BMS, level indicator and also nickel strips for cell connections. Dead batteries can be soldered, but spot welder becomes so cheap those days, so I order also a mini spot welder for under $20. To do that job like it should be. Spot welder I got is version 2, so it got reinforced PCB lines. I only got some old LiPo batteries, so I need to make Y cable to connect two 3S LiPo battery in parallel to get enough current out of them. Spot welder is really simple to use. From the side we got power switch. With two buttons select energy of weld from 1 to 99 and with third button select between manual and auto mode. On left side of LCD it also shows us the input voltage. If we set auto it will few seconds after we make contact with electrodes. For manual we need to connect some button on this input so we can trigger weld with the foot switch, but auto mode works just fine. Ok, let's get back to battery. Now I need to disassemble the pack, but firstly I mark the cells so I put back same pair of cells turned in the same direction. Remove protection tape from the side and then get rid of nickel connections. We can just pull them with a the plier, but in that case we can physically damage their cells. So I just slightly grind over the welded points to easily remove nickel straps. There are still seen points of weld, so after remove I grind every cell to flat surface. Before I start assembly battery pack I check the inner resistance of each cell and find out that all the cells got quite the same resistance, from 37.3 to 37.7 milliohm, so it looked like the cells are in good condition. Now I put all the cells into the holder I got into kit. There are also polarity marks on the holder so assembling is really simple and so far everything fit perfect. When the battery is on its place screw the boot part of holder together with two screws, super design. Then I make a test of weld, and I think that photo tell enough about power of weld. Ok, now all we need to do is to weld all the nickel connections. There are also pins on the battery holder and holes into strips so it really nicely stays on its position and amazingly everything fit perfect. 
Spot welder do its job just great for the price. Only issue I notice is that one of the electrodes slightly stick to the weld, and they become quite hot after about 20 welds in a row. Cable and welders stay cool, only electrode become too hot to hold them, so we need to make some pause during welding. After the pack is assembled I check the voltages once again, and then install the BMS board. Nickel strips already got lines to a BMS, so we don't need additional wires to connect. But just put the BMS board on battery holder, screw to its place and then solder all the lines. When all 6 lines are soldered, I can make first row test on a drill. Yep, already work. But I need to solder a level indicator to its place. There are slots for indicator board on battery holder, but when I put into housing it doesn't fit. Then I notice that into battery housing is another slot, and indicator already got a line to broke a PCB on smaller dimension, so it fit into housing slot. Then I need two pieces of wire to connect indicator with a BMS board. Indicator work and battery pack is now completely assembled, so all we need to do is to put into housing, assemble spring and clip and screw together. Then once again try the pack on a drill and on the charger. Look like everything worked fine, so I can tape the sticker over the indicator. And for the end I remove the old button sticker from the old battery pack and stick it on new housing. I was sure that I ordered a version with 5 amp power sticker, so the pack look even better, but notice I ordered without sticker. That's about it, charger finished charging, so BMS communicate good with Makita charger. Now I'll make a stress test, so I put a fully charged battery on engine grinder and make some cuts until completely drain the battery. At the end of battery grinder stops a few times, but I continue cutting until the battery BMS cut off. Then quickly open the housing and check the temperature. The hottest thing inside was the battery cells. All the welds and BMS look fine, so all I do is to insulate both sides of pack with electrical tape and assemble together. Charger start charging and stop when the battery was full. I hardly believe that this repair kit cost only 12 bucks, because everything is going so smooth. Components fits together perfectly, BMS stay cool and can communicate with Makita charger. So we save $90 worth battery pack for just $12, if you don't count our time and spot welder, which is great. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.